Hey everybody, welcome back to Trek Yards. I am Captain Foley. I am Commander Cockins, and we are looking at a ship today. No, we're not. Oh. Am I close at least? Nope, you're not at all. Oh. I'm being defiant. That's really good. Sorry, that was bad. Well, I guess technically we're looking at a paper sketch. <laughs> technically. <laughs> yes. Yes, this is true. This is true. Um, <laughs> but we are we are looking at a concept, a defiant concept, an mm -hmm. unused one. Mm -hmm. um, and there are a few of these, mm -hmm. and we're going to look at them for sure because that's what we do. We're ship guys. We love it. And uh, yeah, so. Mm -hmm. Defiant, obviously, Jim Martin uh, went through many stages of the process. You can see two other episodes where we looked at the Defiant. And it's very, very different forms. Now we're getting to the more familiar forms of the Defiant. It's obviously still in the Valiant stage before it got swapped to Defiant at the last minute because, you know, Voyager, Valiant, no double V. Um, so it's a lot more similar to Jim, but I think we're going to have some stuff to talk about. Uh, so here are the full sort of pictures. We will have a comparison with the Defiant in a minute. Uh, I assume you've seen this one before. And uh, what do you think? I haven't seen this one before, but um, they're, they're all very similar. So I, I feel like I've seen it at first glance. And then looking at the detaching part, I, I haven't seen that little sketch and stuff. So maybe I've seen it in my in the uh, intervening years, but honestly, I don't remember it. So um, it is quite interesting. It actually feels um, a little bit more like a Jem'Hadar uh, mm. bug ship kind of vibe. Which also did design. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I like the little, the little scout ship part that comes up the front, which they kind of have for the, the the final Defiant too. It's supposed to have like a weapons pod thing at the front. They wanted something funky, and then they never used it. Weapons pod slash deflector slash entrance docking yes. port. So many things. <laughs> Fast bowling alley. That's what the bowling alley is. Yes, absolutely. Am I am I right in saying it, it isn't as sleek as the main Defiant? Yes. Yes, I would say so. I think the greebling stands out way more. It feels more of just kind of thrown stuff in to kind of give detail. But it's interesting how the... I mean, the Defiant itself, and again, we'll compare in a minute, is such an odd shape. But it does, ha it does harness something really interesting. This one, I think the top view is probably the nicest view, although still a little bit too thick. But the, the, the three quarters, to me, it just doesn't come together properly. Obviously, it didn't. That's why it's an unused concept. Although I guess you could say it does look more ferocious in the sense that it's clearly, it, you could sort of say it's more of a saucer with stuff attached, whereas the find isn't as much that. So I, maybe that's what he was kind of going for. Yeah, I think it does feel a little bit more Federation-y in design. Um, but from the top, it doesn't look, it looks too small. It looks too, you know, it, there's just not the sleekness that is the, the Defiant we got. What do you think of the, I mean, obviously we've got lots of the same things, like the back's basically the same, the quantum pod's basically the same, the engines, though, don't have that same elegance. And in fact, now that I've got photon torpedo launchers in the wings, and they don't give that same... They're not basards. They kind of take away that and just make it feel detailed. I don't know if I like the front or not. It's kind of... makes me think of, like, a duck. Duck, uh, you know, those creatures that have those very... Yeah. <laughs> Platypus. Yes, thank you. Yeah, no, I can see why you'd say that. Now, it's interesting, though. It's got these, the weapons... I can't read what it says. Weapons something, um, which are the front parts. Which the Defiant does have, but are never really focused on. I don't know if they're... Are they supposed to move out at all, you know, no. on the model? So there is a little slit that Quantum fire out of, except there, isn't a, is, except there isn't any tube there, and it doesn't fit. It's it's a whole thing. Okay, okay. But that's where they fire Quantum's from. Yeah. Well, they carried quite a bit over from this to the final, so... Yeah. This is... I mean, this feels like an, an unrefined version. But, Stuart... There we go. Here is everything in direct comparison, custom for this. So similar and yet so different. And obviously, I'm, I'm not going to quantify that top view as being to scale. I just assumed it would be the same ship size and therefore linked the, the top and the bottom to the same. So let's let's caveat that with I just based it on that. So yeah, and I'm thinking the what the the sketch that we're looking at was meant to be smaller because I think it was probably the same kind of proportion to the front leading edge there, but. Hmm. I mean, there's a, there is another episode we're going to do with another version where you can see a person that's clearly smaller. It's clearly much smaller. Not, not the Defiant's big or anything, but it is a starship-sized starship. It's a very small one, as opposed to a larger runabout, which was that distinction that was, was how it was changed. Um, in earlier versions that we've seen that we've looked at, they're more, you can even see a cockpit. So you understand that's like a two or three or ten person craft, whereas the Defiant itself is 180-something. Like what do you think? 
Well, um, I don't know if you guys know, but I've never been the hugest fan of Defiant. It's not my favorite starship. Oh, speaking of, Stuart, have we got anything? Oh, well, I got a nice big one here. I got the Playmates one. Makes a lot of sound. They're not going to hit the buttons, though. But yeah, this is the Playmates one. Oh, oh, what do you got there? It's out of focus because I'm going cinema mode. Yes, Eagle Moss Defiant, which you can buy now. It's the XL, huge model. Not necessarily as big as that one, but... Uh, very nice Space and Studio model, etc., etc. You like and you can get I that. like the Defiant. You can, you can get that by clicking the link in the description below. It takes you to the Eagle Moss site. Click the link, though, so they know where the traffic is coming from. Throw that in your cart, and then you can use the discount code TREKYARDS10 to save yourself 10%. So this uh, lens this, this, this lens is closer to me, so I went and actually hit the lens, because the other one's just, like, just enough. I'm used to that. <laughs> I did. <laughs> Not used to being that. But yeah, comparing. So you don't like to find per se, or as much, but, but certainly a better design than the other one. Or... Although, you know, angles are a weird thing. That front segment, I mean, even on our miniatures, and it's the same model that's based off, this doesn't feel as long as on the CGI renders, just the angle. I try to match the angle roughly. So that's kind of a perspective thing. So. Yeah, yeah. And the one we're just looking at, the, that front part, the whole thing comes off like a little fighter. Um, this one has the tilty thing, which was we were talking about was the weapons pod. They wanted to do something interesting there. And they kept going over, um, but never used in the show really at all, ever. Nope. Not even mentioned, which nope. is weird. But but it, I mean, I always found although that they just have a big front, not really, but a nuke at the front. It's like oh, okay, and they'd also have to rip apart the model and then have to put Greeblies there and I don't know. never really quite worked for me as a concept. Either them either. That's why they didn't. Use it <laughs> there you go. <laughs> No, this does feel a lot smaller. Um, I don't know what the initial like call for was for that ship. Like, how many crew? I know the Defiant doesn't have a big crew as is. Well, it's just it's a, not a super big ship. Originally, a larger than you know, a bigger runabout. Hence why. And I don't know why this is in the transition phase, but yeah, certainly smaller. That front view, um, <laughs> they flattened the final model out. A lot of people do say that the cells kind of go down a bit, so there's line of sight still on the bottom. If you, if you care about line of sight thing. Um, but you know, the top one, I kind of like that look where it goes down a little bit further. Like I kind of like that. I wish that the, the defiant final version had that as well. Uh, what I find most interesting here is that I assumed the details was, were closer, but now I'm looking side by side. It's kind of like with the, um, the start of discovery enterprise. You think it looks the same, but when you actually do a comparison as we've done, every single element, every single element is different. You know, the the weapon pods are not connected the same way. They're not the same depth. The weapon pod bit, the greedy panels, every... Like, he had his... Uh, like he, he knew the bits he wanted to do shape-wise, but he had to keep altering the shapes to fit the grandest shape. But they're all there, just not at all the way they would end up being, because they had to keep changing. And that's really interesting that he obviously had what he liked and kept taking over. But it is actually very, very different, actually surprisingly different like and the, the interesting thing is that there's so many different variations of this concept like the defiant before the final version um i would just like to be sit in on those conversations about how and why things were picked and why things were you know shuffled off um and this was originally going to be called the valiant as well like but there was two ships that would have the hero sh the, the v for the hero name which i'm not that dumb to confuse them but apparently they think the most of their audience is yeah, warship voyager and explorer valiant it's like they, they don't even match the name and they look so it. similar they look so similar too like you know of course we get them and, confused. and their captains are so easily confusable yes um it's just one of those it's a great piece of star trek history and we love looking at concepts and design evolution and this definitely fits in there um I just wish I knew the sizing for this one because I think it's probably half the size of the final Defiant that they went with by the looks of it. Yeah, and I, I'm, I'm assuming this is because we've seen the other versions where they look more like shuttles, etc. This, I think, is one of the first iterations of the alien concept he'd done prior and then converting it. And it'd be interesting to see, you know, like you said, as a fly on the wall, when you're being told to customize a non stuff looking design and how do you change that to look Starfleet, or at least vaguely. And so imagining what he added here or not here. It would have been nice if this had been a color pass, so then you could see where the blue the blue would go, the red would go, the pennants, because I, I can't, well, none of those, there are no pennants, there are no red and blue, so it's kind of taking away from me in that respect. 
I'd like to have seen it like colorized. I know there is another version which is colorized, which we'll look at at some point. But where, where would that have all gone to kind of reinforce it? You know, maybe the blue gloves have been even more, etc. Yeah, and it's interesting because, like you said earlier, on the front of the weapon or the uh, in the cells, it looks like they're almost torpedo launchers. Um, so which would give you a size indication if those are torpedo tubes, which they look well, like they that's are. One of the things. Yeah, it's one of the things that visually I think subconsciously I've locked on to to say that it's a much smaller ship. Uh, that and comparing the size of the front pod, the width and things like that. Like you can see, you can scale it down quite a bit if you match those up. Because that definitely makes um, it a one deck ship. Which yeah. makes it, yeah, tiny. Much more like a six man fighter. Six man fighter. I think like bigger than a runabout, but. What? And this is one of those things that, you know, I've been called out before for using original, original, the real scales of the Define and the Nova. The fact that they're about the same size, uh, and yet one is only tiny with the crew, etc. The fact is, guys, they've got photons, quantums, and pulse cannons, all of which take up space that aren't otherwise used. Because a phaser strip is an external weapon with a bit of internals. A like pulse phase cannon is all internal. So think about how much room is being used. How much room just to store the weapons in the Defiant. A ton of it. And you can see all the nacelles aren't practical space. Etc. Etc. So there's not much internal volume left for people. Whereas an over, it's a full internal volume space. It's an average ship. So, so you talk about the internal space. Yeah, I was thinking ten man craft sounds a bit silly for that size of ship. But obviously, if most of it's internally weapon, yeah, you're looking at potentially only like five or five, six, seven rooms. Yeah. Yep. Different yep. bit of context. Yeah, there. we know we've, even the final defiant didn't have a lot of internal space because they had the shuttle bay on the bottom which took out a big chunk and you know there's different things like that so but <sighs> there's jim martin here's the defiant go by defiant if you want go check out more of these sketches from jim martin of all made defiance because they're really really interesting and uh, good to finally cover them on drake yards that's right and we will be covering the other ones and have covered some i believe so go check it out just type in concept defiant trek yards and you'll find them go watch the other ones because there's quite a few to look at so until next time guys hit that like button don't forget to subscribe to the channel and join us for any lives or any great discussions that we have because we love talking about ships and all things trek really so if you can join us please consider doing so but that joining us may hopefully lead some direct support because we need that support especially in the off months we're not looking at a new tv show from the star trek or or Mandalorian, etc. So support us via Patreon is a really, really great way. It's monthly. You can join the YouTube channel. Another monthly donation way, and that gives you a little icon in the chat, which we love our uh, live stream chats because you can be that member, or you can super chat, and we love that because it's the direct communication. Uh, we, we absolutely you know, live off that stuff in the sense of vi both physically and that interaction really can bring these conversations to life. Uh, or PayPal if you just want to put it anonymous, or uh, just a little thank you on trekyards.hotmail.com. Each and everyone helps, and if you do more than one or throw in a super jet once in a while, it does mount up. That's right. So until next time, when whenever we see you, um, I am Captain Foley. I am Connor Kongs. See you then, guys. See ya.